So Albert Einstein described himself. In ten years, Einstein went from high school dropouts to formulator of the theory of relativity. How? Why? What can we learn from his career about our most precious resource, the human mind? I believe that one of the strongest motives that lead men to art and science is flight from everyday life with its painful harshness and wretched dreariness. One who is more finely tempered is driven to escape from personal existence to the world of objective observing and understanding. And this motive can be compared with the, the longing that irresistibly pulls the city dweller away from his noisy, cramped quarters towards the silent, high mountains. Man tries to make for himself in the fashion that suits him best a simplified and intelligible picture of the world. He then tries, to some extent, to substitute this cosmos of his for the world of experience that does not transcend it. This is what the painter, the poet, the philosopher, and the natural scientist do each in his own way. Albert Einstein's discoveries in physics range from the molecular to the universe. His formative years, the years of his unequal creativity, were spent here in Switzerland. In his education and his character may be revealed answers to the riddle of all genius. Einstein submitted only 14 lines in response to a biographical request from the Revolution. That modest summary conceals one of the greatest adventures in human thought. He was born in Ulm, Germany, on March 14, 1879. Spent his childhood in Ulm and Munich, and went to college in Zurich. After graduation, he became a faithful examiner in Berlin. The world with a series of discoveries that transformed the world. Honored by the Sorbonne and by the Nazis. He returned to his native Germany only to be driven out by the Nazis with other intellectuals like Thomas Mann. He settled in Princeton, New Jersey and became a life member of the Institute for Advanced Study. His findings in relativity led other scientists to manufacture the first atomic bomb. But Einstein had no part in the making of the bomb and urged nations to renounce it as a weapon of war. Einstein spent his last years at the Institute seeking to develop a unified field theory that would integrate all natural phenomena. He was 76 when he died on April 18, 1955. He asked that there be no ceremony, no shrine. Einstein's achievements have been inscribed in memory and time. To trace the nurturing of his genius, one must go back to 1895. In the late summer of that year, a troubled but determined young man of 16 arrived in Zurich. Albert Einstein had fled without a diploma from the rope learning of an authoritarian secondary school in Munich. Einstein came to Zurich and Einstein explained it. It followed from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are food, are but different manifestations of the same thing. A somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. Furthermore, the equation E is equal to mc square, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy, and vice versa. The mass and energy were in fact equivalent. According to the formula mentioned 
the whole. This was demonstrated by Kokra and Walton in 1932 experimentally. Einstein's hypotheses were to be confirmed by the unlocking of the atom, the development of nuclear energy, and the making of an atomic bomb. Einstein's energy encompassed even more than the theory of relativity. Einstein was happy in Switzerland. A man is left to himself and his privacy is respected. That privacy was lost irrevocably after the First World War. The name Einstein became a household word, a symbol of man's yearning for salvation through science. His overriding concern was that man learn to control the forces of science and unleash. To give any estimate of when atomic energy can be applied to construct this surface is impossible. What now is known is only how to use a fairly large quantity of uranium. The use of quantities sufficiently small to operate the same in a car or an airplane is as yet impossible. Presumably, all materials which may be used for such purposes will be among the heavier elements of high atomic weight. Those elements are relatively scarce because of their lesser stability. So, though the release of atomic energy can be, and no doubt will be, a great boon to mankind, that may not be for some time. Despite his renown, the third half century remains simple and unassuming in his person. The secret of Einstein's genius may well lie in his simplicity, his childlike curiosity, his complete concentration, his playful visual imagination, and his openness to the symmetry of nature. But there is something else. The human intellect is a delicate flower. Albert Einstein. His career reveals how we must nurture the mind to help liberate man from dogma and deception. I am one small piece of nature. Pond. Vietnam War Memorial. Monument to Albert Einstein. National Academy of Sciences, Philip Handler. Albert 
years, Einstein went from high school dropouts to formulator of the theory of relativity. How? Why? What can we learn from his career about our most precious resource, the human mind? The idea of achieving security through national armament is, at the present state of military technique, a disastrous illusion. The hydrogen bomb appears on the public horizon as a probably attainable goal. Its accelerated development has been solemnly proclaimed by the president. If successful, radioactive poisoning of the atmosphere and hence annihil annihilation of any life on earth has been brought within the range of technical possibilities. That was an exclusive statement which Professor Einstein made for the NBC cameras five years ago in which he warned that the products of his genius, atomic bombs, were a menace to mankind. The professor often left the scientific world to speak on moral and political issues, especially those posed by atomic energy. Is there any way out of this impasse created by man himself? All of us, and particularly those who are responsible for the attitude of the U.S. and the USSR, should realize that we may have vanquished an external enemy. What has been incapable of getting rid of the mentality created by war? It is impossible to achieve peace as long as every single action is taken with a possible future conflict in view. This is the formula which summarized Einstein's theory of relativity, a theory which gained him a Nobel Prize. Einstein took mass or the atomic weight of a substance, and the speed of light, which is constant, and express their relation to energy in a simple equation. E equals mc squared. Another formula proposed by Dr. Einstein, with a twinkle in his eye, involves success in life. The rule, he would say, might be expressed as follows. Success equals x plus y plus z. x being work, y being play and Z, keeping your mouth shut.
You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. For the sake of all of us, and for the sake of our country, I know that you join me in wishing this expedition well. It is now 30 seconds to zero time. Put on goggles or turn away. Do not remove goggles or face burst until 10 seconds after the first light. Minus 15 seconds. Minus 10 seconds. Niner, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, T zero. Work on high-yield hydrogen bombs had progressed from Operation Ivy, culminating in the spring of 1954 with Castle Bravo, the largest device ever detonated in atmospheric testing by the United States. Bravo was a hydrogen bomb using solid thermonuclear fuel, confirming the designs of Edward Teller and Stan Ulam, and paving the way to producing aircraft deliverable hydrogen bombs and more effective weapons.
significantly exceeding its expected yield by two and a half times. Castle Bravo, with an explosive power of 15 megatons, stripped islands clean of vegetation and took the scientists by surprise. The huge explosion released large quantities of radioactive debris into the atmosphere. This resulted in the exposure and contamination of some servicemen, natives, and the crew of a Japanese fishing boat, which had gone unnoticed in the security zone around the blast. This incident pushed the dangers of fallout from nuclear weapons clearly into the public mind. Cultural modus operandi, every parent and child worldwide shall leave the motion picture theater knowing that they have seen much farther than Einstein ever expected but nonetheless that they have seen Einstein's vision and beyond. Here is basal structure law 1. A. Pure gravitational unified field structure which is Einstein's gravitational field treatment for the structure of the universe as a whole. As applied to an infinite hierarchy of galaxies. This law is a solution of Einstein's field equations of gravitation in a static, symmetric, pre-established infinite hierarchical state. This structure law 1 is quote, infinitely certain and quote, according to Andrea Klune of Georgetown, Washington DC in the Wisconsin House at 2712 Massachusetts Avenue. Her motion, spirit and enthusiasm could be an prickle proof that God exists and can't live in the terra firma of the human soul or amid the voidal nucleus of the brain of all living creatures. Children who are in private school and went to college, that's when the men get caught in the middle of the middle match. I think it's still been going on for generations. Well, honest people are hard to find. I don't think they are. It's just certain situations. In the open. Like your dad would have liked it. Yes. From the biography Subtle is the Lord by Abraham Hayes, page 464. The universe as a whole in 1923 does field theory offer possibilities for the solution of the quantum problem in 1923. Einstein was 44 years old and continued to live in a finite island universe which was not the physical reality. In 6th grade Timothy Kreider recognized many other surrounding galaxies and examined the resultant gravitational field which permeated throughout his experience. Classroom, schoolyard, entire earth shared by all men. In 8th grade he delivered his Ten Commandments report to school principal Helen F. Stoner by 44 years old for Einstein. The reality of galaxies not recognized by Einstein would forever doom Einstein to failure.
by 11 years old, for Timothy Crear the reality of galaxies recognized by Timothy Crear would complement Crear's attempt to unify matter and fields since four years old and make it easy to far, 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 Art C. Einstein. For any doubts about that contact gross at trp.uxb.edu and hartle at physics.uxb.edu. Event 3 Timothy in the summer of 1950 takes his usual evening walk with his father G.F. O'Boyle and since O'Boyle moves quickly, he always reaches down to pick Timothy up and places him on his shoulders. From this vantage point Timothy can describe to his father his new discoveries about the workings of nature at home in the park and as far as the beach and night sky of stars. On his father's shoulders Timothy describes his theory of the size of objects which shine and the intensity of the light seen which depends upon the distance from the source. For example the street light is seen up close and at a distance. That description to his father Together with his request to go with his father and see the tennis court and then the baseball field and describe the sameness of hitting the ball with the bat or tennis racket, very much pleases his father who then points out with his hands that the sun seen rising in the morning attracts the earth like the earth attracts the ball which Timothy had pointed out. However Timothy's dad is a poet and a sculpture, and goes on to elegantly describe the sun, earth, planet, solar system. Timothy's dad goes on to tell Timothy that he can see and feel the earth rotating and Timothy's father describes with his hands both the rotation of the earth by itself and around the sun and he tells Timothy that he can see these beautiful rotations when he goes to the beach in the morning with his mommy. As a matter of fact it is every night as they walk that they together go to dad's art studio which is then his grandfather's auto paint and fender repair shop on Clark Street Avenue. Timmy's dad is a sculptor and has carved the body of a leopard out of wood and is using that as a mold with dried liquid plaster in which bronze metal is heated, melted to a liquid and poured in the leopard mold. Would Albert Einstein plead for a vision that exhibits, 1, childlike curiosity and 2, exhibits the symmetry in nature, and, 3, is the culmination of a child's visual thinking, whose audiometric analog is, unequivocally, the prelude to also scratch Zarathustra, and is in fact the uncontestable physical theory of e pluribus enum. Would Albert Einstein express himself with great passion on the question of the making of a motion picture for children worldwide?
cultural modus operandi, every parent and child worldwide shall leave the motion picture theater knowing that they have seen much farther than Einstein ever expected but nonetheless that they have seen Einstein's vision and beyond. So, I hope I've given you some flavor for the kinds of questions which um, we ask. But I, I want to convey something to you that it's, it's an extraordinarily remarkable fact. It's not a fact about me, it's a fact about the way human beings think, the way human beings, their cognitive abilities, that when you think about it for a moment, uh, you know, a small, relatively small band of hairless apes has been able to deduce all of this, has been able to deduce such strange and totally unintuitive, very, very foreign ideas, very, very abstract ideas about the universe as peculiar and as unintuitive as the world is a hologram. I thank you. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the second of Honey Sussman's three messenger lectures. Based on the number of people who uh, stepped up to us and uh, introduced themselves to Lenny and tell him how thrilled they are to meet him in person. Cornell's messenger lecture was established in 1924. It's also true in most other physics that the number of degrees of freedom that it takes to describe a region of space is proportional to its volume. We have found out by the series of indirect arguments that any region of space can be described by a collection of degrees of freedom which are no more numerous than the area of the region in Planck units. That led to a conjecture. It led to a conjecture that any region of space can be described by some kind of theory describing degrees of freedom on the boundary of the region of space. That is what was called the holographic principle. Holographic because it's like a hologram. That was a conjecture. It was a, um, you might even call it a speculation, which is worse than a conjecture. But it was in 1994 or so that this conjecture was put forward. Most people at the time thought it was a screwball notion. But it took a couple of years, basically until 1998, until a young Argentinian physicist whose name you should know. I, I, don't, the more I ask people, do you know who Juan Maldacena is? I'm talking about physicists or physics groupies and so forth. And often they don't. Juan Maldacena is perhaps the greatest physicist of his generation. I won't tell you how old he is. He's younger than me, so he's not necessarily greater than me, but, uh, <laughs> but, but he is by, certainly the greatest physicist, the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation. One, I'm going to write his name. Maldacena. Mal, Mal stands for bad or something, but I don't know what the, what is this, what does, uh, bad of, what is Sena? 
It's, uh, it's Italian, I think. Bad of Sena? Anyway, his first name is Juan. Juan Maldacena produced a perfectly rigorous description of this for a particular kind of space-time called anti-de-sitter space, but that's not what's important. What's important is he dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and found an extremely precise mathematical description of the degrees of freedom on the boundary which would describe a region of space. And indeed, it turned out that there were no more of them than one per Planck area on the region of space. So in some sense, in some sense, the world is really described by a kind of holographic description on its own surface. Just to, to make it graphic, everything in this room, there is enough degrees of freedom on the walls of the room to describe everything in the room. It is as if the walls of the room could be thought of as a hologram describing what's happening in the interior. Okay, so we got through the holographic principle. Thank you. We have found out by the series of indirect arguments perhaps the greatest physicist of his generation. I'll t I won't tell you how old he is. He's younger than me, so he's not necessarily greater than me, but, uh, <laughs> but, but he is by, certainly the greatest physicist, the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation. out by the series of indirect arguments <laughs> certainly the greatest physicist the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation but it took a couple of years basically until nine but it took a couple of years basically until nine but it took a couple of years basically until nine Not necessarily greater than me, but uh, <laughs> but, but he is by, certainly the greatest physicist, the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation. Not necessarily greater than me, but uh, <laughs> but, but he is by, certainly the greatest physicist, the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation. Not necessarily greater than me, but. Uh, <laughs> But he is by, certainly the greatest physicist, the greatest theoretical physicist of his generation.
Quite honestly, I don't feel like doing this. This is not something I'm going to enjoy. Why am I doing it? I've decided that I will make a little video and put it on my website. It's a rather popular website. Many, many people see it. And I am going to say something now that may make you uncomfortable. It makes me very, very uncomfortable. But here it is. I'm going to read it. Make no mistake, this is a grab by a clever, devious, and power-hungry man. It is a pooch. This may well be the most important target for our protests. Personally, it scares me more than anything else the orange Godzilla has done. Please, don't ignore it, and please respond with action. Thank you. Make no mistake, this is a grab by a clever, devious, and power-hungry man. Power. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.